second. Hello, Hello everyone. Um, so my name is uh, Wellington Souza. I am a program teaching staff at Code Institute focused on uh, ABCD. And I would like to welcome you to the ABCD and Conference uh, 2023. So you are attending the session Applying Asset Based and Community Led Development at Code Institute. Um, today is the third day of 10 days of action. It means that from October 16th to October 26th, people are coming together to draw, to draw on each other's wisdom, um, to, dis to discuss successes and challenges of making change based on ABCD principles. And I'd like to start by doing a land acknowledgement. So I would like to, to begin by, by acknowledging that we at Code Institute are gathered on the traditional and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Uh, the Mi'kmaq nation has stored these lands and waters for count countless generations and their connections to this land runs deep. So my respect to the elders past and present, as well as to the youth who are shaping the future of their, their community. And, um, and now I'd like to invite um, um, you to introduce yourself. Some of you have done that in a, in a chat. So make your own land acknowledgement in the chat. Also, yeah, uh, put your name, where you're coming from, you're not a, uh, your, your land acknowledgement. And now as, as you do it, I'd like to invite Krista and Tom to officially open our session today by inviting spirit into our work. Krista. Bilalin Wellington, um, thank you for that beautiful land acknowledgement. And um, Malia Tsipuk, Deliwisi Krista Hanscom, Deliwi Bakungek, Mi'kmaq Nation, Edlugwai uh, Circle of Abundance. So good morning, everyone. I am Krista Hanscom. I am from the Bakungek Mi'kmaq Nation, which is located about 15 minutes from the Cody Institute. And I am one of the program teaching staff with the Circle of Abundance. I'm going to share a quote with you. This quote is by the late Richard Wagamies. And I thought it was a great thing to ref a great um, idea to reflect upon as we start our time together. Um, normally, I would offer a smudge, which is um, we burn some sacred medicines and we would um, say a prayer and those and the smoke would raise our prayers to the creator. Um, but today, um, just in honor of um, the diversity here in in the space, and I want to honor each and every one of your um, and respect each and every one of your uh, your faiths and your beliefs. Um, I just want to start us today with this quote: "The purpose of life is not to be happy; it is to be useful, honorable, compassionate, and to make a difference." And that's by the late Richard Wagamese. And I believe that's a great way to start our session today. So just take a moment to reflect um, and bring your spirit into the space. And we bring our minds together um, to share with one another and to learn together. Walalio, hope you all have a really great day and a great session. And thank you, um, Wellington, for inviting me to, um, to start this time together. Thank you so much, Krista. We really appreciate it. Um, so we're going to have an introduction to the session. To the session, I mean, Applying Asset Base and Community-Led Development at Code Institute. And we have, and we will have three panels. The first panel is uh, the Diploma in Leadership Development Participants Experience with ABCD. That will be the first one. Uh, the presenters will be Dr. Esther um, Ekitela, Prasi Nantongo, and Yatam uh, Simene, uh, Swart uh, Nakvi, and uh, Kevin Good is also participating in it. Uh, the second panel is Women Organizing to Enhance Child Care and Protection Using BCD. The presenters Jovita Imle, Nicole, Anna Marima, and Anambris uh, Molel. And the third one will be ABCD and Indigenous Cooperative Education. The presenters will be Pamela Standing, uh, Trista 
Pewa Pisconias and Caroline Paul. And the last panel will be moderated by uh, Krista Hanscom as well. Um, um, throughout the session, uh, Carrie Ferguson will harvest the learnings. Um, so uh, yeah, by the end of each session, I would like to invite Carrie to give like a brief of what she harvested, like a minute or less than a minute brief of what she harvested um, in that session as well. We're also going to take a, 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 a screenshot after each session. So to register your presence and have a big, uh, a beautiful picture um, after each one of, of the sessions. And also, I'd like to um, during the during the presentations, I'd like I'd, uh, I'd ask you to keep your cameras off, so only the presenters would have their camera on. And also, uh, if you're not speaking as well, so keep your uh, microphone as well. We really appreciate it. Well, let me give you a bit of a background about this session, right? So, ABCD is a fundamental approach at Code Institute. It resonates to our roots, the Anigunish movement. Um, a local community development movement evolved from the pioneering work of Reverend Dr. Moses Cody and Reverend Jim uh, Tompkins uh, in uh, the 20s. So the movement was a response to poverty afflicting farmers, fishers, miners, and other disadvantaged groups groups in the in the uh, eastern Canada. So the idea was to organize people to learn and build the communities based on their strengths. So. ABCD terminology wasn't used back then, but the principle of abundance was present. So today, uh, Code Institute is a, is a global leader in citizen-led, community-driven, asset-based approaches to change. Um, so the Institute is committed to break down and transforming the North-South divide by bring people together to exchange innovations and learn from each other. And uh, through relevant adult education programs, effective partnerships and, and, and research, the Institute is equipping community leaders and their organizations with knowledge and practical, practical tools uh, needed to bring about the change they want, they, they want for themselves. And this session uh, in, the, in the ABCDN conference is to celebrate the work of these change makers and, and their communities. Um, I would like to invite the, the panelists, the first panelists uh, to get tuned and ready. And um, now I would like to move into our first panel of the day, Diploma in Leadership Development Participants Experience with ABCD. Again, I'd like you uh, to ask you if you're not a, a panelist to turn your camera off um, so I can see all those who are presenting. So I'd like the um, um, I will uh, begin by talking a little bit about the diploma. I'm mo I'm moderating the session. I will begin by introducing uh, the diploma a little bit, um, a short introduction to the diploma, and then we're gonna move to um, the introduction of the panelists. Okay. So Cody Diploma in, in developing leadership is a deeply rooted is deeply rooted in adult education approaches. Uh, I really encourage you, if you never uh, took the diploma, please do it. It's an amazing experience. So participants and facilitators collectively explore, unpack, and deconstruct the notion of development from a feminist, decolonial, and asset-based lens, based lens to enhance their leadership uh, uh, capacities and their abilities to motivate and support people in creating a better world for future generations. So throughout the program, participants are exposed to asset-based and community-led development principles in order to enhance their work. So in, in this panel, we have uh, five diploma participants. We have Dr. Aster Ekitela, we have Prasi Nantongo, uh, Yatam Simene, um, and Kevin Good. I'm not sure if Swar uh, Swart Nakvi is present here. So they will share um, their experiences of thinking with and applying an ABCD lens 
and they will have a few minutes to introduce themselves and how they're applying their learnings from the diploma. Then we would move to uh, some questions. They will have from five to 10 minutes to introduce themselves before we get into um, the questions. So it will be a conversation. And in the very, very end, I would like to open the floor for um, questions and answers from the audience, okay? Um, Esther, you were the first one, right? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Wellington. Uh, my name is Esther. Ekitela from Kenya, uh, as well said by Wellington, I'm one of the Diploma in Leadership Development participants for 2023. Um, I am an educator, a facilitator, a researcher, and um, attending this uh, course was really very useful for me. Um, my community and also my work. Uh, just to share on how the ABCD has really been very instrumental uh, is that um, first and foremost in my community, uh, I applied it to the, um, we have a women association. Uh, this is a community that um, women have very, uh, let's say little uh, ownership of, for instance, property uh, because of culture issues. So we had to navigate on how we can be able to support ourselves and empower ourselves as women in this community. And uh, the use of ABCD approaches was really very instrumental. Uh, in the first place, uh, the use of the the specific approaches that we learned, for instance, uh, we, we learned what we call the leaky bucket. So this is a tool that you can use for, you know, for instance, if you want to know how much or the amount of finances that you bring, for instance, for us in our association, and also you monitor the expenditure, you know, that you are um, spending. So this was very instrumental for us because now it opened our understanding and we were able to monitor and uh, even navigate and look for other ways uh, as an association of improving our inflow and also trying to reduce our, our outflows, um, inflow in terms of income that comes into the association and then the expenditure is the outflows. And um, this was really very instrumental because it motivated us and empowered us. I'm talking like this because I'm one of the members in that association. And also uh, the training also um, gave us this, um, you know, more understanding about ourselves on what gifts and what talents we have. And we were able to identify the talents we have and we shared among ourselves. And we realized that um, as a team, we had very, a lot to share among ourselves. And we were able to identify our talents, we were able to identify our gifts and be able to, you know, to empower each other. And that really um, helped us to elevate even um, our members, you know, we were not very confident in that. Um, and we were also able to, you know, navigate through and bring a lot of co collaboration with partners and also the government. And um, for instance, um, you know, uh, liaising with government on ways of uh, securing funds. And uh, this one really boosted our initiatives and we were able to to continue and build down on what we were already doing. So um, I think ABCD was really a very great, a great initiative for us. And I can see that we have a lot of empowerment as women. And this one has also um, attracted a lot of attention even to 
to, to the external participants. And um, another very key thing that we learned was to strengthen and, and enhance our collaboration so that um, because alone we will not be able to do it. And remember, because this is a community that is very strong in cultural practices, uh, of course, we'll always have that uh, resistance from their male counterparts. But because of this uh, knowledge of just, you know, understanding the system of the community, the system domain of the community, uh, we were able to just navigate through and even bring the participation of men, which was a great achievement. And we are seeing a lot of support. And um, because of this support, I we are accelerating very well in our interventions and we are seeing a lot of growth. Uh, in my work, um, I'm an education practitioner and I support education. And this is where um, I support uh, partners in um, enabling the out of school children to access education. And specifically this was for out of school girls. Some of the girls who drop out because of um, early pregnancy, poverty and things like that. And we were able to, uh, to support them to in, the, in what they can do best, especially, okay, those one who could not come back to school, um, we supported with um, uh, supporting them in their skills in what they can do best. Like for instance, those who, are, who can do hairdressing, um, tailoring and such, such things, which they really excelled so well. And uh, those who are still at the bracket of school age going, uh, they were able to go to school and some of them have even done the national examinations and they've been able to join uh, secondary schools. So this was really very instrumental to us. And um, we are seeing the lives of these girls really changing. And thanks to ABCD because of these approaches that um, I was able to share with my colleagues and they are, we are able to implement it and it is working. And at a personal level, I think this was also very um, empowering because I even identified more gifts and skills that I have and I could be able to share with the team both at the, co at the community level and also at my workplace. So, and this was a positive uh, deviation to, you know, to every aspect of my life. Otherwise, I would say that it was great learning um, the ABCD approaches, which are really um, bringing a lot of impact and empowerment to my community and also at my personal level. Thank you. Thank you so much, Esther. Now I'd like to pass on to uh, Prasi for her introduction. Okay. Hey. Thank you so much, Wellington. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, I'd like to appreciate the Code Institute for this opportunity to share and learn together. Uh, my name is Prosi Nantongo. Uh, I'm a social worker and entrepreneur, a mentor and a leader as well. I work with uh, Beautiful World Canada in Uganda, Rwanda, and Zambia. Uh, we prepare our university students for life after school, that is for formal employment. Uh, I am also a CODI participant, a diploma participant, and it was at CODI that I got introduced to the ABCD approach. Uh, and uh, I'm very excited to share uh, my experience using this approach in my work. And um, with the ABCD approach, uh, it gave us an opportunity to identify our abilities, resources, skills, and knowledge. That is before looking out to where we can get support and who can support us. Um, also when you're dealing with the you know, students, mostly university students, in most cases we tend to lie on other, on other people or other support, where can we get the donation and who can support us. Uh, but uh, introducing this ABCD in my work, uh, I actually realized that many of these young women and young girls 
have a lot of skills and they have a lot of abilities and also within our communities we have so many opportunities and resources that in most cases we tend to ignore and focusing on what the problem is and who can actually help us overcome or uh, deal with the problems that we face in our communities and not realizing the opportunity and the strength that we have uh, as a community. And with this ABC, it opened our eyes to see greater opportunities and the strengths that we have as communities and as women. And this has helped us to navigate through um, our growth and development. Um, uh, as women in my community, but also uh, as, as well, you know, as we are continuing to discover because uh, we are just starting to use the ABCD. And so we are continuing to discover more of our potentials and, our, and the opportunities that may arise with using this approach. And it is really doing wonderful. Like I'm seeing a lot of um, teamwork and, you know, a lot of ownership of the program that was not there before. So uh, I'm very, very excited to use uh, this kind of method and to go on and learn and discover what more I can actually, we can achieve as a community by using the ABCD approach. Yes, so thank you so much again for the opportunity. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, into the questions and also get to, uh, to learn more from my colleagues and other people on this platform. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much for your introduction, Prasi. I'd like to open the floor to uh, Iwatan. Thank you very much, Wellington. Uh, my name is Ayatam Semena from Ethiopia. I live in Addis Ababa. Uh, I am one of the CODI uh, 2023 uh, development leadership participants. And uh, currently I, I work as a manager of business development at Population Service International, PSI, uh, which is globally uh, present in 63, 65 countries. And also I'm the co-founder of Social Enterprise Association, which is a national umbrella organization for uh, pretty much social enterprises in Ethiopia, which is an emerging concept anyways. And I'm the vice president uh, uh, for Social Enterprise Association. Uh, saying this, I think I would like to uh, acknowledge Cody Institute for uh, giving this chance to attend uh, all the courses which are like very, very foundational in nature. But then there was a deep dive in FBCD approach, which is asset-based community development approach. And for me, what resonated very much was sustainability because many times we often receive funding from outside sources. And if there is no funding from outside sources, we tend to kind of slow down in some of the things we do uh, at home, which is very, very colonialist approach by itself, but we imposed it, our will imposed it on ourselves. So ABCD is something that opens our eyes in terms of uh, looking into what we already have rather than what we lack. Focusing more on what we abundantly have as a group, as an individual, as an institution, as an association, or you name it. So that's how we kind of, even at Social Enterprise Association, we always depend on grants from Europe or from our partners in, in the US. But then now, there is this ABCD approach that like I, I I was introduced at first at Cody Institute and I have no idea whatsoever before. So after that, then it kind of supported uh, like my team and myself to kind of redesign the kind of uh, development approach we're following at Social Enterprise Association. So uh, I think ABCD is more for us, especially for social enterprise association. And for, for me, I see it as a very, very good sustainability uh, approach rather, rather than like a dependent or grant uh, seeking uh, behaviors that we mostly developed in development sector. So it is really an opening and uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, and I would like to hear from everyone uh, today. Thank you, Wellington. 
Thank you so much, uh, Iwatan. Now I'd like to pass it on to Kevin Good. Thank you, Wellington. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm calling in today from the unceded territories of the Coquitlam First Nations. Uh, my mother is Laverne Good from Nanaimo, BC. My father is from uh, Tea Shop, um, Port Alberni, BC, Vancouver. Um, yeah, you know, uh, my name is Kevin Good. I come from the Sinemo and Tea Shop territories. I currently reside in Coquitlam First Nations. Um, Currently, what I do for work is I am a program coordinator on climate and energy resilience with the Fraser Basin Council, where I help communities um, with energy efficiency housing. And we are doing workshops to build capacity within indigenous communities in BC through a learning method of um, something called Train the Trainer program. So we bring in indigenous um, members from different communities across uh, British Columbia. We teach them about energy efficiency, and then they'll go back to their communities and we'll allow them to teach other community members to learn about energy efficiency. And um, when I attended Cody, it was my first time actually learning about ABCD approach as well. And it was very, um, very eye opening for me because, you know, to learn um, the asset based community development. Um, I didn't really know anything about it. And uh, it was really helpful for me personally, as well as the community, because uh, when I going to start implement it within the community, um, you know, we really focused on the grassroots approach of starting from the bottom up. And I think um, going forward with that, when I talk to some communities across BC, you know, they, there's a lot of struggles of talking between Indigenous communities and the government um, of Canada. And um, I started noticing some of the communities are actually starting with the local government rather than the provincial or the federal government. So like taking that grassroots approach of connecting with the community and seeing what assets they have within the community and what they can do to cultivate those changes at the grassroots level and build up from there. And as um, soon as I got back from school, I actually started talking about the ABCD approach to my manager and my program lead. And they really liked the, the idea of it. And um, we're in the midst of talking a little bit more about it. So yeah, but um, thank you, Cody Institute, for allowing me to be a part of this. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, so what is so what present? Just confirming. No, he isn't here. Okay. Uh, now I'd like to invite the panelists um, to turn your ca you, the cameras on and uh, let's have a conversation. I have uh, 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 some questions here and uh, we can use the questions to uh, foster our uh our conversation well uh so diploma the dip, our diploma in leadership development um uh, in our in our diploma we go through a lot of themes right abcd is one of them uh but you you talk about power you talk about um uh, research ethics you talk about development theories so abcd you are introduced uh, to abcd very early in the program um, so when you when you were first introduced to ABCD, what particularly resonated with you? What what was what appealed? Um, Esther, can you can you start? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Wellington. Uh, when I was introduced to ABCD, um, what really resonated with me is because um, is the use of the word assets, you know, use of what you have. So first. Um, before uh, uh before participating in ABCD, I didn't know what it was, but now uh, after my after participation, um, I realized that um, the ABCD is something that we've been doing because it's the use of what we are doing. So I think it really resonated with me because 
uh, of what our community, of what I'm doing, of um, just using what we have, you know, as a community, as an individual, for our own empowerment, for our own progress, for our own development. So I think that was very exciting because it's something that, oh, this is something that we were doing, but only that we didn't know it's called ABCD. So that's how I felt it really resonated with me and I was excited even to learn more. Thank that's you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Esther. And uh, Iwatan, what resonated with you uh, when you were intro first introduced to ABCD? Thank you. Thank you, Wellington. So I'm more used to uh, hearing like need, need assessment or need like identifying needs rather than like assets of the community. So we have in my development work for the last 10 years, I am more used to about like needs assessment before you just design a project or anything. But then now we are talking about assets assessment, which is very, very much uh, different for me. So, and it was like my first time to, to be honest to hear about the approach and I have I have no clue before, even though like as Astir mentioned earlier, there are elements that we can do within organization where we kind of map some of what we have, uh, but it was, it was just that. And it wasn't uh, very systematic the way we do it, like the way we kind of uh, do asset, asset mapping or the way we kind of think what assets are is very, very uh, low graded. So in this scenario, it was such an op eye opening experience and I really uh, appreciated the fact it was one of the uh, standing out courses that uh, I would say I took from the development leadership program. Great. Thank you so much, Avatan. How about you, Kevin? Yeah, thanks, Valentin. Um, I think what resonated and appealed to me about the ABCD approach is the appeal, you know, um, within Indigenous communities in uh, British Columbia, you know, um, we, we usually focused on, you know, what is it, uh, what are the gaps that we face or what are the challenges or the things that we need to address rather than actually look in, you know, at our gifts and our strengths that we have and that we can collectively bring together to, um, you know, address these challenges. And that's exactly what ABCD does is not look at the, the issues or the challenges, but look at what gifts and strengths you have that you can come together and overcome these challenges. And that's what um, really resonated with me is in that sense of um, coming together and looking at your gifts and your strengths to overcome. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. Prosi, what resonated with you? Uh, thank you, Wellington. Uh, what resonated with me is the is the fact that uh, ABCD recognizes everyone and, you know, it allows each person to have a chance to take part in the growth and as well as display and utilize their unique skills and abilities. And the fact that it's also its community, like, in, in identifying their full potential and opportunities in terms of resources, in terms of abilities, knowledge, and, you know, so it it more promotes the connection and the teamwork within the community. So that really resonated with me very much. And I was very excited to actually learn more and be able to practice it. So Yeah, that, that's great. Um, I'd like to get back to, to go back to what Esther um, said in the beginning. Uh, that like they realized they were doing it. They were not calling it ABCD, but they were doing that. And, and this, is, this, this is true. ABCD, like communities all over the world are doing ABCD for ages and ages. And uh, what ABCD uh, as an approach is just an articulation of what people, people are already doing, right? And uh, so we, what, what I can see is there are some pre-existing practices or beliefs that you guys had were reinforced, right? And but how about the challenges? Um, uh, Ayatam was, was um, mentioning that he's very used, he, he, he was very used to uh, needs assessment, right? But ABCD comes from a different mindset. It's a mindset of abundance. 
Uh, Ayuatan, could you unpack that a little bit? It's like what pre-existing practices or belief um, have been reinforced or challenged uh, by being introduced to ABCD? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, there are like approach from school or from our development uh, um, project design and everything that will like, let's say community participate or participatory development appraisal or, you know, concepts like that. But then with ABCD, I think uh, it has like, particularly at Korean Institute, uh, we have like all the kind of tools available uh, to kind of go through what uh, uh, ABCD could be uh, beneficial in the, in the process. But also one challenging element was like, we always do look for grants. I have always like, I work in the development sector, as I said, more than 10 years. And like, I don't remember a time where considering local resources is as important as uh, like getting grants to just let the project go. At some point in time, we need to get a grant. Otherwise it's very, very difficult to pay for our salaries, to pay for our office rents or anything else. But then at ABCD, you have this approach where, okay, let's start from the community. Let's let's explore the community first. And then you as a development practitioner, even you are not supposed to be a, a development practitioner. You should kind of assume a role of facilitator, kind of animator within, within that community group to kind of help them move around, assess what they have in their in their premises. So this is very, very much like an important uh, approach uh, and a very good mindset, as you said, uh, Willington. It's such a good mindset because then, the, then you overcome all the fears, you know? I think fear is what holds us very much. And fear is need, you know? Fear doesn't give you what you have. It just stuck into what you don't have. So overcoming fear is where you start living, you know? That's like what Osho said, like you you start living after you just get rid of your fear. And ABCD is something that I will just relate to, like getting out of that shell, you know? Getting out of that box or ring where you say like, no, I don't have this, I don't have this, or like the community have no water, the community has no electricity, the community has no, so like all this, will trap you otherwise if you don't use like asset-based mindset. So that's how I will, I, will, I, I was challenged a little bit willing to. Thank you. Thank you, Ayata. Prasi, what pre-existing practices or belief have been either reinforced or challenged by being introduced to ABCD? Well, thank you, Wellington. So uh, the problem is that uh, uh, people are very customized uh, and they too focus on what they actually lack. I won't, I won't differ <laughs> from what Ayatam has just said. So people focus more on what they lack and what they need, who can help them. I think it's the system that we, we are actually used to rather than first taking stock on what we already have, what is available and, you know, like discovering how best we can use what we have actually to do something useful out of it. But people are extremely um, uh, reliant and very dependent. Like they're used on receiving. Uh, we can still talk about for us as organizations or people that work with communities. In most cases, we rely so much on the donation that come from probably people outside our country, like in Uganda, so rely so much on these uh, developing countries and expecting donations at any time to overcome what we actually, you know, the problems that we are having in the community and not, you know, thinking so much on what we have as a community and what is available to help us to overcome the challenges that we are facing. So uh, it is it is hard to actually to work with people and remove that dependence syndrome that they have uh, to also be able to uh, look into their communities and see the potentials and the strength that they have as a community that they can first work on that before they actually think of something else, thinking of getting support from other countries or other donations or other organizations, so yeah. 
Thank you. How about you, Kevin? Yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, in Canada and in BC, um, you know, government actually really like underfunded indigenous communities for a long time. So when we took the, when I understood the ABCD approach, you know, um, my partner, Crystal, who actually was meant to be a panelist here today, but she's feeling unwell. You know, she really brought forth the idea of uh, what's the low hanging fruit. You know, if you had nothing, um, if you had nothing or the bare minimum of funding or resources, what change can you still do? What what strengths and gifts that you can you have or your community have that you can bring together and um, you know create this change? And I think indigenous communities in BC, um, you know, for a long time, they've been practicing the ABC approach. And just like Esther was saying, you know, um, it just wasn't called that. Um, you know, indigenous communities were always very close knit and they relied on each other with their strengths and their gifts that they had and that they shared together. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. Well, think... Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, Esther. How were you challenged or um, any, any, you already kind of mentioned that, right? Some existing practice that actually were uh, reinforced. Um, uh, I think to me is um, the big challenge maybe that I've seen is um, since these are uh, marginalized communities, they might not have, for instance, a full access to the asset capital, some of them. Like, for instance, I give an example of um, a natural capital or physical capital, and uh, this is land. So in this community, land is owned as a community, not as an individual. And sometimes if you want to progress, maybe um, you want to access, like, for instance, accessing credit from the banks, sometimes they need they need, uh, for instance, a title deed. But you see, since you don't have a title deed, um, you can't be able to do that. And could be, this is the main asset that you have. So I think access to some of these asset capitals um, is a challenge. And uh, so it really um, makes the access to all these assets becoming uh, so difficult. Mm -hmm. And some, sometimes you have these assets, like for instance, the, the natural asset, you have minerals, you have, um, you, have uh, you know, the natural assets that you have in the community. But since you don't have that capacity, you know, to explore, maybe the government is not supporting you. And if they identify one, like for instance, uh, in our community, they manage to explore and access oil, you know? When they access that oil, for instance, the community does not get the percentage to benefit. So I think that's a big challenge just to have that capacity and access to some of these capital assets uh, is really hindering the implementation of ABCD. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. And, uh, and uh, perhaps this is a good time to, to say that ABCD isn't against outside agencies to give support or even against I'm in the right now. no uh, however yeah, I'm in the right now. I'm in the right now. I just ask you uh, to mute yourself uh, thank you so much um but the starting point is different because you start with uh, the strengths of the community so three questions might help you uh, in that process the first question would be what can we achieve by using our own assets? And that your, there is your, um, uh, this is your starting point. <clears throat> the second question would be, what can we achieve we, with our own assets if we get some outside help? And then the third question would be, what can't we do with our assets that must be done by outsiders? So when you think about these three questions, um, um, you put the community at the center. You put the community 
uh, first. So you strengthen you you are strengthening your community and you're building your community from the inside out. Um, well, now let's talk about impact. I was talking about empowerment. So this is where the community now that increase of self-esteem grow, goes up and they feel empowered because they can be able to do things by themselves. And um, then the second one is on uh, collaboration uh, with uh, within with, with the team and also the external partners, you know, uh, like for instance, um, enhancing uh, capacity building like for instance, um, trainings on how to, to manage finances or any gap, you know, that uh, the community identifies. So it has really increased a lot of collaboration with even external partners. And the third one is um, growth, uh, growth in econo economical growth in the community. So because of the assets that uh, because of the assets that the community is using just to empower themselves, I'm seeing a lot of growth. I'm seeing a lot of um, empowerment coming in. And of course, collaboration, which is bringing a lot of uh, strengthened uh, partnership within the community. Thank you. Awesome, Esther. Thank you so much. Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Valentin. Um, so I think um how it's impacting my work you know like kind of like what Ayatun was saying you know it's the mindset as well is it's changing the mindset of oneself and others and as Esther was saying this empowering you know and um I think how it's impacting my work um you know through capacity building is uh is what we're aiming to do at my current job and um you know I think along with the capacity building we're addressing self-sovereignty as well. And, you know, to be self-sovereign is starting at the grassroots, starting from where your community comes from and, you know, what strengths and gifts that we can build upon to um, become more sovereign and more self-sustained in the sense of, you know, not relying on outside resources, but relying on oneself and community. And, um, you know, I think that's uh, kind of how it's impacted my work is, uh, helping the community become more self-sovereign and as well as um, constantly challenging my own mindset as well and trying to always have a more positive outlook on things regardless of the challenges that we have to overcome. Thank you, Kevin. Rossi, can you go back a little bit on impact, please? Uh yeah, the, um, the impact is that it, um, it has aided me in developing the abilities of these young women, and it has created a sense of project ownership, I can say, uh, because I've seen more previous students that have gotten involved into this project, and they're coming out to do, to uh, there's there've been a lot of uh, peer support and mentoring by the previous students that actually completed, so they're coming back to support other fellow students that are ongoing. And in addition, I've also witnessed uh, a sense of cooperation, uh, mutual assistance, and also giving back to the community. Like I've seen many of the students, you know, um, recognizing what they can actually, what they have and, you know, using them to give back to their community and supporting other peers and other women within the community to also, you know, to, improve on their skills, their abilities. And I've seen a lot of support without relying on uh, on other support outside, but just within ourselves as as women, as girls. So I've seen a lot of peer pressure and mentoring. So, thank you. Thank you so much. I would tell, could you unpack a little bit about the EBCD, how EBCD is impacting your approach to work? Thank you, Ellington. Yeah, so, uh, in my scenario is Social Enterprise Association, which is my organization. We have been dependent on uh, getting grants and it has been uh, like very, very challenging for us because we have to spend uh, overnight, like most most days uh, writing proposals and you know waiting for uh, feedback from donors. So it was really, really like challenging, you know, to 
to uh, get funding for small and emerging community organizations. Uh, and then what happened is we have been always thinking a way where we can kind of build a business model so that we can keep generating revenues within social enterprise Ethiopia and refund the revenue into the, uh, the purpose we are set up for. So what we are set up for is to provide capacity building training for social entrepreneurs, to provide mentorship training for social entrepreneurs and all these business development supports. So we have been delivering that, but we always have to get funding from outside organization. After attending CODI, there was this change initiative program facilitators of the CODI uh, diploma facilitators. So we were some uh, develop uh, a change initiative, a change plan, or design a, a plan when we get back home and uh, deliver it somehow. So what I uh, designed was from outside. How can we do it within our existing capacity? And then ABCD was there. So it was such a nice coincidence. And then back home, when I came back, I just talked to with my fellow board members, my fellow founders and our, our team, our staff. And I presented a concept about ABCD and how we should kind of use the kind of trainings we have been delivering to our members. And if we can really customize them to deliver it for the general public and uh, make them pay for the trainings. That way then we outreach our work in, ter in terms of like mass number of people, but also then we will get uh, a funding stream where we kind of recover our costs for different uh, operations. So that was really, really important. So we get deep and dive into what we have. So we, for example, me as a social entrepreneur, I had all these incubator trainings from different business development companies. And my friends have been in different uh, business development trainings and they are trainers. So that's what that's our, our capacity as a team. Like, what we started, that's where we began. And then from that on, we just start building up. And now we are actually in the process of uh, developing a training manuals and training uh, department for social enterprise association, which will be outreaching non-members, but they have to pay to get involved, but it will be like a very good price. Then this is what asset, asset is. It is very, very valuable asset that we had but it has been uh, kept hidden for until I came to Cody Diploma Program. So that's how, how I would mention it, Wellington. Perfect, thank you so, so much, Awatan. I have seen a lot of people in the, in the chat uh, talking about uh, uh, integrating ABCD with the other approaches, right? And how ABCD can be enhanced by being integrated uh, with other approaches or how can we do that, right? So during our diploma, we mentioned an expression that a former uh, Cody colleague, Brian Peters, uh, used to say, ABCD is necessary, but not sufficient. So the question is, what does this mean to you, Kevin? Yeah, thanks, Valentin. Um, you know, ABCD approach is such an amazing approach, but you know, just because something is amazing or something is good doesn't mean it can't always be improved. You know, there's always room for growth. And um, I think utilizing it with other uh, tools that you could have um, could really help because when you use the ABCD approach, obviously, um, you know, it needs to be catered to each community because each community has their own individual challenges or their own uh, individual uh, needs that they need to um, uh, need to come to terms with. So I think um, you know it is necessary in the sense of uh, I think towards becoming more self-governed to um, grow as a community together to uplift them. And um, but I think it's like when it's not sufficient, you know, because it needs to be catered to each community and that, um, sorry, 
lost my train of thought there, but um, no worries. Yeah, I think. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll come back to it after, but I think no worries, it needs to... yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Kevin. Um, Esther, ABC is necessary but not sufficient. What does this mean to you? Uh, what it means to me is that um, necessary. It's a very powerful tool. Um, it's not sufficient means that um, you can't just use it alone and you say now, oh, I have arrived. No, you still need to incorporate other approaches. Uh, like for instance, um, you need to use um, other, like for instance, you need to use partnerships to increase collaboration uh, with other um, external facilitators where applicable. And um, that will really, you know, bring a lot of impact than just saying, as we have all our assets, I think we are set to go. No, no, no. We also have uh, system uh, issues. So you also need to look at that. Like, for instance, you need to scan on the system domain. What are the cultural beliefs, you know? that are hidden there's some things that are not that are that are not seen why are things working like this so you need to really navigate through and understand that and come up with ways on how you can be able to you know to 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 solve that and even bring more impact so it's not it is it is necessary and not sufficient so but it becomes more sufficient if you bring in more linkages collaboration partnerships and even um, uh, bringing in external facilitation where it's applicable, just to strengthen what is already there. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Esther. Ayatan, what does it mean to you? ABC is this? Uh, okay. Thank you, Wellington, again. So I think. If, even in my, uh, I, I mentioned earlier about like the process we went through in my social enterprise association. So I will just give an example where, for if we we design, we believed that the training is what we have, and we have the asset, we have that uh, we can design curriculums within within uh, within the room. We can uh, we can also kind of prog do the programming uh, within within the room, but then. We kind of said, okay, then unless we don't we don't have like the right amount of finance, we can't just kick this off. So then there there comes or you there comes a need for for something within your programming, within your development programming. And then that's okay. That's very, very okay. If if you have been building upon the mindset of abundance and having all what you want. But then there creeps um, a need for one particular element or two or three, you name it. But then it's okay to kind of, okay, explore, be open about it and explore opportunities uh, either outside or within the group, but it could come from the mind of need sometimes. And that's what it means. ABCD is not uh, sufficient sometimes, like it is a necessary tool. But you don't have to kind of you know be stubborn and uh, and say like no we should like contribute money from our pockets where it could be millions of dollars you know or, or like you can't you can't really uh, raise millions of dollars maybe within a rural community somebody was asking about rural and uh, urban context in in asset based community development in the chat so like it it. There are societies where they don't have cash. For them, for example, for Aster Easter society, they are pastoralists and they have cows. Their cash is cows or like lambs or different animals. But for societies in urban areas, it could be it is a cash a cashful society. So they them have cash. So it's kind of like exploring uh, other opportunities where you find it the most. So don't be stubborn. Use a busy your programming, but whenever you want to jump up and use something else, just use it. It's like life is uh, free, you know. Don't be in prison. 
Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Iwatam. Frosty. Yeah, thank you, Wilton. I, I won't differ very much from what my colleagues have actually shared. Uh, ABC is very necessary because it helps to build the capacity of the community, but also it disregards the disputes in power <laughs> and the politics of funding and also other factors of development. Uh, for example, if I'm to maybe to talk about my community, like in Uganda and most of the things are even most of the assets are being owned by the government. So you also have to put in mind there are certain things that we can do and certain things that we can do as uh, as communities. And so we also have to put in mind the power aspects and look at the power balance and then to know and to relate with them. So we need to apply other, other approaches and not just ABCD. In like Ayata mentioned, like when it comes to also the funding, we have also to keep in mind the political of funding, most of us that deal with organizations and all that. So sometimes they require different approaches and different tools. So you also have to keep in mind that you can do the two. You can actually follow the funding and whatever the donor wants, but also you keep in mind to incorporate the ABCD in mind that in case the donors pull out or the contract and still the community can still own their own development and continue the project. So we also have to uh, think through that. So that is what uh, resonates with me when it comes to ABCD is, you know, is necessary but not sufficient. So we need to use other factors of development. Thank you, Wellington. Thank you, thank you, Prasi. And I'll have a, a last question. I know people people want to ask you questions as well. I know <laughs> um, I'm gonna have a ask you a last question and then we, I'm gonna open the floor for uh, questions from the audience, okay? Uh, so my last question is, what is next, right? I know you have been introduced, you are thinking through ABCD, you are applying it, um, but um, what do you anticipate doing with this approach from now on? Kevin, do you want to start? Yeah, thanks, Wellington. Um, I think what is next, you know, is to um I think constantly reevaluate and self-reflect on what ABCD can be and what it can grow to become. Um, you know, I think like is uh that previous question, you know, it's necessary but not sufficient. Um, I think we can really utilize the ABC tool and grow it within our own communities to cater to our own needs and our own um, challenges that we need to overcome. So I think what is next is to ask those hard questions is what is it our com communities need? You know, what are the challenges that we're facing and what can we do together to overcome them and kind of cater it to what your needs are and what the challenges you face and to really self-reflect on your own mindset of, you know, what what gifts and strengths do you have? And, um, you know, for me, ex my example is to use the feminist approach in um, the upcoming uh, workshop that I'm gonna be doing. And so, yeah, that's, that's I think, what is next. So thank you, Wellington. Thank you, Kevin. Esther, what is next for you? Yeah, um, I think for me, what next is just to, to see the strengthening of the ABCD. Um, there's this framework that I'm currently working on. Uh, it's called uh, Livelihood Resilience Framework. And uh, I was thinking on how ABCD can incorporate that so that we enhance the adaptability capacity of the community. So what you're talking about in ABCD is the buffer capacity. How do we, you know, use the assets that we have just to buffer ourselves so that we can be able to access natural, human, um, physical, and uh, financial capitals, those ones. But the adaptability and sustainability of the community, how do we sustain that? Bringing in the issue of political, um, environmental, social. Remember, we've talked about politics around funding. So how do we bring sustainability 
as much as now because we know ABCD is not uh, sufficient. So it is not suffi sufficient because now because of the sustainability. So I think now the next thing is to look at now as a community, how do we sustain what we are doing? That is my, my take. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jester. Ayatam, what is next for you? So I think the next days, like I uh, will continue designing our program and uh, hopefully we will uh, finalize like having our capacity building trainings into wide reaching uh, scenario. But also what's next is I think the mindset. Just keep it in mind that whatever you do, like I, I see ABCD not applying only on development perspective, but it is like an individual perspective as well. So it is lifelong, uh, lifelong, uh, like psych psychological state where I can apply it in my home, in my household, my personal life, and even at wider level, even at nation, national level, like African countries, like I live in Africa and African countries uh, have been always looking for development aid or World Bank mon and IMF monetary fund. There has been a lot of criticism coming from Africa these days where, okay, these development agencies are a trap. They, wanna, they want us to keep in the same loop of poverty. And I think as a leader in community development or in my leadership, uh, wherever it takes me, I will apply ABCD to kind of uh, mobilize communities, mobilize their resources, mobilize their spiritual experiences, their passion, mobilize their passion. Every, every gift that the community or myself or everyone that I come along has will have to kind of first start from, okay, I have this and let me get this, you know? So that's next, that's the mindset is next. It's coming up and stopping anymore. Thank you, Ayatam. Rossi, what is next for you? Yeah, uh, because the process is continuous. So at the moment, I'm trying to establish relationship and trust among these young girls and women. And I am making these young ladies be aware of the opportunities that are already present, both within you know their own communities and also among themselves. Uh, I'm also assisting them, you know, to to help them realize their own power that is within, uh, and also recognizing the various abilities and the talent skills that they actually possess individually. So, in order to strengthen my uh, ABCD approach, so they need to uh, they need to uh, build this strong relationship and trust, so they have that trust amongst themselves, so that they can be able to support each other. So that is what. I'm doing at the moment. Yes. Thank you so much, Prasi. I know you have answered a lot of questions, but I'd like to ask the audience if you have any question for the panelists. You can you can um, write your questions in the chat, or you can just open up your mic and uh, and ask your question. Uh, Perhaps if you raise your hand, so we can we know who is who is is uh, the next one. Raj, do you have a question? Yes, yes. Namaste. I'm from I'm Raj from Nepal. I'm a graduate uh, development in development leadership from Kodi, 2007. Just uh, I'm uh, here in Nepal. I'm working uh, in one training center uh, as a executive director. When I was written from the Kodi International Institute, and now uh, I'm here working uh, approach of the ABCD approach in uh, my uh, training center. I we apply ABCD approach in our context and our organization. Uh, thank you so much for the inviting this uh, great opportunity to join with the international community. Oh, I'm from the uh, National Planning Commission 
members as a development leader to Princeton Line University of Thailand. I'm uh, just a PhD scholar for my uh, PhD topic is, you know, the asset-based community development, how effective community development, asset-based community development approach in this world and how can we apply in our country. So uh, I'm so great with the seminar uh, you all re present the very good presentation from your side and i just want to uh, this approach is renowned and very applicable for the all over the world uh, abcd approach is where is the assets there is the development and then there is a power there is a, uh, a self motivation so our country is also you no know, the community development is the different types of the approach nation is not as a for the community development but i am doing a kind of advocacy from my side in my from my organization uh, I would like to say something about the ABCD. We have the lots of the assets in our country. We have the so many uh, mountains. We have so many uh, rivers and other forests. Forty four point some uh, seven percent forest we have. But how the people are poor? People are not getting uh, you know the uh, they are they're suffering from the problems so this approach is very known approach and uh, we i i just want to uh, this approach is how effective abcd all over the world and the presenter says that the uh, perspective about the children perspective about the old age people perspective about the different things so Really, obesity approach is success in this world. There, there are any, uh, there is any evidence for the successful uh, development approach as develop development things. So I don't. I just want to uh, say that I'm very good. I'm very much happy to share with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Raj. So what I understood, it, it was not really a question. It was like a reinforcement of like how ABCD is a, a, a pro, an approach that works and, um, and creates impact. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We, we are applying the ABCD approach in our own context, in our country. Here are different things, different uh, parts of, uh, about the ABCD, but we are applying, you know, the people who are really poor, really living in the, on, under the development, under the um, poverty line, that those people, how, how they can, achieve their lab livelihood through the ABCD. Okay, uh, perhaps the, um, sorry, panelists, do you want to uh, jump in, please? Yeah, I, I think like, um, kind of touching up on that, like I was saying before, like, I think, ABCD can be used in any context, but um, it has to be catered to each community and where they come from because each one faces their own challenges. And um, I think instead of me talking about it, you know, um, you know your story best. You know where you come from. You know the challenges that you face. And I think uh, you definitely would have the answers and to come together collectively with other people uh, with their strengths and gifts, you know, you can overcome any challenge when you start to work together and address these issues with um, 
using the ABCD approach as well as other approaches combined with it. That's just kind of my, my input on it. Thank you, Kevin. Any other panelists? Okay, um, next recording. Uh, who is speaking, um, sorry? Um, Sunday. Is that, is that another, is that uh, another? Sunday? Sunday? Yeah, from Nigeria. Is that another, another question coming in? Not, not a question, but to respond to um, the speaker's first question. Oh, you want to contribute? How can, yes, please. Yeah, how can use ABCD to address the problem of poverty? Um, I think the, the issue really is for the facilitator to make the people themselves who are poor to recognize um, the resources in their community and then um, be able to activate those resources to address the challenges of poverty in their community. Yes, as it goes uh, in our communities, they have the means for them to produce the change, the development that they need. So it's all about um, the facilitator being able to make um, the people to recognize the resources that they have and how they can channel resources they give as, as it were in the context of ABCD to produce the wealth, the development, the opportunity. Uh, can I say something? Sorry for that. Uh, please. Uh, we are doing the uh, social mobilization course in our country. The people from the very remote area, they are coming in the uh, coming for the training and they, they, they will uh, we will provide the training and uh, they receiving the training after training they are going to work with the their own community in the rural street setting in our context. So the people really wants to work and they wants to be uh, trained and perform, performing the, some uh, works in the real, their own community. But the, the government, have, there is no policy and provision for those people who, are, who wants to be a trained, who wants to be giving the service in the real community, in the, their own community. But I just want to share the, we are talking about the ABCD approach. We are promoting, we are uh, em empowering this approach. We are just applying this approach all over the world. How can we accommodate or integrate or cooperative ways to help them, the, those kind of people in our country? Uh, the people are really interested, <laughs> the youth <laughs> are really interested <laughs> to work. So uh, I just want to, how can we integrate, how can we uh, um, formulate our uh, ABCD approach uh, association or approach with the collaborating with the international community? Please, thank you so much. Yeah, Raj, um, I can uh, jump in quick on that one and, and move to uh, the next question if we have. Um, I believe those three questions that I mentioned before is a, a good starting point for reflection. Um, so ABCD start with community strength, right? It's about the strengthening community um, and a stronger community can see international agents for, agencies, for example, as assets so they can channel the efforts, right? So the first question then would be, uh, what can we achieve by using our own assets? And this is the, the activation that Sunday was talking about. Um, how can we identify and activate those 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 assets that we already have, and and uh, strengthen strengthen relationships that we already have in the community, right? And then the second question: How can we achieve with our own assets if we get some outside help? Um, as Kevin and other panelists were mentioning, um, and we are reinforcing uh, reinforcing it, ABCD is necessary but not sufficient. In other words, we're going to need some outside help in some cases, but how can we, again, building on our strength, like bring outside help to enhance what we already have. And the third one, 
what can we do what what can't we do with our assets that must be done by outsiders uh, and that is like the last last question that we answer um because unfortunately in some situations we it, particularly in emergencies um, um we're gonna need a, a strong intervention from outside um in other words um the we should you should explore ways to strengthen the community and build the community uh from bottom up and and bring and integrating other approaches as you go so hopefully that that uh, helped a little bit with the reflection. And uh, I, I just, just one second. Uh, if, if we collaborate, if we join with the international community, if there is a forum, if there is a association, if there is a interaction uh, program or seminar, and this, this is one of the step, one step for the development, for the uh, develop and exploring the SABCD. So, if my suggestion and my feedback for this session, uh, if we have the any uh, international community, we have the one a kind of formation for the a formation for the collaborative uh, coordination community or something, it could be better to giving feedbacks and taking feedbacks from the all over the world definitely thank you raj i appreciate it is there any other question from the from the the audience my biggest interest is uh, actually my name is vuyom sizi i'm working for an organization in south africa called sket social change assistance trust and my biggest interest is, you know, how is the diploma that you are mentioning is structured? Uh, because I had been doing uh, ABCD, I was trained by Color Trust in South Africa. And uh, the way that the their course was structured, it was structured as uh, ABCD as a process, ABCD as instrument, and ABCD. Uh, but I think there are, there are three three elements to it. But I want to know how is your diploma structured, the APCD diploma that we are talking about, and whether also is do you have any assistance, financial assistance that you provide uh, for students from other uh, countries who want to participate in your program? Yeah, thank you. Panelists, um, Ruyo, can you can you uh, repeat your questions, please? Rio? Hi. Can you can you repeat your questions, please? Oh, do you hear me? Yes. Can you can. hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm saying that I'm I'm here in South Africa. I'm interested to participate in your programs, hmm. but uh, we are using uh, the ABCD approach at work in terms of mentoring organization, especially an appreciative approach. Mm -hmm. Especially when we are visiting organizations, uh, because where I normally start, I start by appreciating their achievements mm -hmm. and listening to their story. What is it that they have achieved? But I appreciate it when you mentioned that you can use ABCD with other approach, yeah. because there are instances where you need a needs-based approach where now you are creating now developing strategic steps that people will take to address the gaps in terms of their their programs. But I'm interested to, to participate in your program, but I'm wondering whether you have a financial support or financial assistance for people who would like to participate in your program. 
And I'm also interested in terms of the structure of your program. Because when I was doing ABCD here in South Africa, the focus was on ABCD as a process mm. and also ABCD as instruments and ABCD as a paradigm. And the paradigm was focusing on a paradigm shift. I'm checking how is your ABCD program is structured at, at that side of the, the world. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a chat a link to the description of our program. And our program has three modules. The first one is online. The second one is uh, in person here in Nanigo Nation, Canada. And the third one is is online as well. Um, there is financial support, but I would like to ask the panelists to jump in and perhaps talk a little bit about the experience. What have you learned? And, um, and the structure of the program. Thank you, thanks. Yeah, I can jump in. Um, so the the first part of the online modules, you know, it's it's helpful in the sense of, um, I guess, an intro to uh, what is expected of the ABCD approach and what the Cody Institute is um, about. And then when you get to the in-person, um, I actually had a really amazing experience. It was it was very eye-opening for me to see people from around the world and the challenges that they face, as well as it kind of correlates with Indigenous peoples of Canada as well. They face this, some of the same issues and challenges. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just the ABC approach that we learn for the in-person. There's so many other tools and so many other um, you know, uh, materials that can be utilized. Um, and one example is um, the feminist approach and, you know, how you, how the feminist approach works um, is, you know, you look at the most dispossessed people of the area and, you know, how you could utilize their voices and um, understand where they come from and have that compassion, that understanding of, you know, the challenges they face. And um, it was it was a really amazing experience in the sense of you know challenging myself as well to challenge my thoughts, my own experiences, my um, own ideologies, and that's I think is one of the amazing things about the the Cody program is it really helps you challenge yourself in the sense of growth and your growth to becoming the leader and it really helps you self-reflect on where you come from and where you're going and um yeah I'm, i'll leave it there keep it short to see if any other one would like to jump in any other panelist yeah maybe just to add to what uh, kevin said um so here, these are two. These are two programs. We have diploma in development leadership, and uh, we have the ABCD. So with the diploma, it has um, it has incorporated different uh, programs in it. ABCD being one of them. Just like as um, Wellington said in the in the beginning, we'll also have research. We have. Uh, we have feminism theories, we have so many other things. So this is where you will now learn other approaches that can be incorporated with ABCD to make ABCD even more stronger. So I think I would uh, really encourage you to attend the diploma one to get expansive experience of the same instead of just one ABCD approach. So there you'll have variety of approaches so that now when you go back, you can be able to know which one is applicable to you and which one do you apply? And also which one do you think will give you more impact depending with the context that you have? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, panelists. Thanks so much, audience, uh, for the questions. And, and um, I'd like to thank you all again uh, the next uh, uh, panel will start soon.